Hey, you want to see something cool? All right. Hell yeah. Nice. All of those moments look good, and they feel even better. But why? Animation and sound are important, but there's something else that makes it all pop. The secret sauce that gives us billowing fire in Mad Max, messy explosions in Doom, and whatever the hell this is in control. It's VFX, specifically particle effects, and it's absolutely vital to making video games feel great. And it's all a lie. Or maybe just a series of very artful deceptions. Smoke and mirrors. Particle effects are an incredible example of game developers using artistic and technical creativity to overcome the limitations of their tools. But precisely what the heck is a particle effect? To find out, we talked to some of the masters of the art form. To remedy, visual effects are extremely important. The visual effects allow us to uh, build experiences where the player gets feedback, where they have very clear understanding of the consequence of their actions. Miksu is a game director, so it's his job to make sure that the art direction, the story, the gameplay, the level design, and the sound are all coming together as one cohesive package. Because that creates this satisfying, gratifying feel that the game recognizes what I'm doing and, and, and responds to the player. It's fundamental for any kind of interaction uh, in, in any kind of a game. So particle effects give you feedback, but they don't just tell you what you've done, they tell you exactly how it went down. I think a lot of what people associate with it is the interaction between two things and telling a story of that interaction. It's how powerful it was, um, how, how not powerful it was, or the temperature of it, or essentially this, I would say the story of what that object is and the properties of it. Precisely how an object reacts communicates important information. In a shooter like Rage 2, it can tell you if your shots are actually doing anything. So. In a situation where you have a very armored individual, you're shooting at them, the bullets are hitting and then sparking and flying off in a very distinct way. When that armor pops off, then you get this really sort of meaty thunk, 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 thunk feel. So a lot of the blood coming out is a relationship with the health of that thing that you're attacking, at least if it's an organic thing. These bursts of sparks, puffs of smoke, and splatters of blood are all vital in communicating to the players and making us feel good. But how do they get made? Particles are ephemeral and amorphous. Their shape changes from moment to moment, and that makes them really, really hard to render in 3D. So how do they make an explosion with real detail, scale, volume, and depth? They don't. But they do put an incredible amount of work into faking it. This is Oscar Bernalind. If you meet him at a party and you ask him about his job... I usually say I blow things up. And he does that with the help of particle effects. But a particle effect in its basic form is a physics simulation where we then put image images on top of different points that are physically simulated to create the sense of giving a volumetric effect. So for instance most explosions are just billboards which is just it's a flat surface. It's a flat square that's being put on a point and then being moved through space. So this is how games trick you into thinking you're seeing an explosion. If you saw it from an angle you'd be able to tell that it's flat. So to avoid that, the particles are automatically oriented towards the camera. And this solution works for all kinds of stuff, depending on what we attach to these invisible points. Attaching sparks to the points can make a rudimentary bullet impact. Attaching alien goo can make a rudimentary blood burst. And attaching confetti can make a rudimentary celebration. But to really spice it up, game developers modify the parameters. How many particles do you want? Should your particles get bigger or smaller over their lifetime? Which direction should they move? Should gravity affect them? How about wind? How quickly should they fade away? And what about the particles themselves? Aside from still images, developers can use 3D meshes, light sources. They can use animated images or flipbooks to show the particle evolving over time. By mixing and matching these variables, VFX artists can make whatever they want smoke drifting up from a wreck, dust shooting out from under a tire, whatever the hell this is. But back to explosions. Avalanche's games are explosion-oriented, so Oscar has made a lot of them. His explosion recipe has three key ingredients, the kick, the high point, and the fall off. Each of these ingredients uses particle effects in its own way. As the name implies, the kick kicks things off. 
for the kick itself usually we use like a flash of a generic shape or spark shape or basically you know the cartoony ones when you see it's going like tsh. then we add additional sparks as well to add more momentum to that and they don't want the explosion to look too perfect so they add some dark grit to break up the brightness of the flash once we've seen that initial burst it's time for the high point which is as the explosion grows to its full size. And this is where we get most of that kind of fire smoke interaction, which is what most people really enjoy seeing and such from the Michael Bay movies. One trick that Avalanche borrows from noted explosion pervert Michael Bay is his liberal use of slow motion. Because real explosions move too fast for you to appreciate the hypnotic dance of the flames. So Avalanche's explosions move in slow-mo, while the rest of the world just cruises along in real time. Here in the high point of the explosion, the evolution is the main attraction. So to sell that evolution, they attach flipbooks to the simulated points. Flipbooks are 2D images, but they're animated. They do the complicated fluid simulations in a program like Houdini, and then they export a series of images that they can plug into their particle system. Played on its own, it looks kind of like an animated GIF, but groups together with subtle movement and rotation and complementary effects, it looks like this. Explosion. You blow up a truck or a gas tank and you get an explosion that looks big and billowy and rich. And it looks like it has depth and continuous shape that morphs and evolves. But once again, it's just a series of flat images stuck onto points moving through space. The illusion works so it feels good, but nothing good can last. That's why we need the fall off. Just having a kick and a big mushroom cloud coming up would look cool, but if it then just kind of whoosh, disappeared, it would not feel as satisfying. We need to see the wind pushing the dust away and smoke slowing down and dissipating. So it's kind of trying to enhance that feeling of it being something that's physical within the world. This is one of the awesome strengths of particle effects. They can be pushed around by the wind or affected by gravity. They can be attached to moving objects and move with their own velocity. This means every particle hit can feel a bit unique, like it's a direct response to what you did and how you did it. Game developers tune their effects to make them look and feel satisfying as hell, but those effects can also tell us a lot about the game's world. In some cases, they can even help tell the story, like in Control. Your enemy is the Hiss, an alien energy that corrupts reality. It seeps into humans and fills them up, and when you shoot them, they pop it kind of uh, strangely breaks the reality as it leaks out when you hit the enemies. Sounds super gruesome, sorry about that. But, but, but that's the kind of the idea that we are kind of dealing with strange forces and resonances and elements that don't behave in an expected way. To visually sell the idea of these strange forces, Remedy combines the very practical particle techniques we've been talking about with some extremely innovative post-processing. That's where Elmeri's team comes in. So we take, for example, an enemy, and we take information from the previous frame, we reproject it from the position of the camera in the next frame, and kind of draw this uh, trail of the enemy. But that would be boring to look at, so uh, then it gets advected with the fluid simulation, and then after that it gets uh, broken into the colors of dispersion. Okay, that is weird, so let's try to break it down a little bit. You shoot a bad guy, and an explosion of hiss mist comes out. Like our explosion particle effects, it's a bunch of objects stuck to invisible points. But these aren't just balls of fire. They behave strangely. The mist distorts time. Everything you see through that mist is one frame behind the rest of the game. Then they make that image wobbly and weird using real-time fluid simulation. And then they apply a secret recipe of oversharpening, color filtering, and other little adjustments to make something genuinely otherworldly. Something that sells the story that this vape cloud from beyond breaks our reality. From a story perspective, it's mysterious and weird, but from a gameplay perspective, you still know exactly what it's telling you. The sharp tendrils of mist that shoot upwards are a big blinking sign that says, you got a headshot, good job. You can fill a screen with explosions or dust or reality-bending cotton. The trick is making sure all of those things look like they belong there and that they all serve the game. Really adamantly make our visual effects 
part of the world so that they, they fit in and they blend and they get married to the scenes. Developers reach deep into their VFX toolkits to make sure everything looks and feels right. They're constructing an elaborate illusion. And you know what? Lie to me. <laughs> I love it. Look at this shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice.